folks, while you are waiting for my next serious video with a social investigation, I'm working on it, but it takes time and resilience, I'm offering another topic for you and my also entertainment and rest. Let's discover the Carpathian nature together by going on the tour by tram on a narrow gauge railway in Precarpathia region. From this tram we will see Carpathian mountains. The narrow gauge railway, which is only 70 cm, situated near village of Vyhoda. Road is called Carpathian Tram by both locals and tourists. It was built to transport wood harvested in the Carpathians. In the time of Soviet Union, the narrow gauge railway was actively used. Guys, we are traveling with Ilya's parents, my parents-in-law. Excursion lady just had told us that this narrow wheat railway was used for transportation of the wood and development of these roads in this area was possible only by wood processing enterprising. And this factory with wooden goods were established by Austrian businessman Popel. Yeah, but now this railway is not functioning only for tourists. The Carpathians were almost unexplored when Leopold Popel came here from Austria. He had an enterprise for harvesting and selling wood. The Baron moved his main office to these regions and here he built narrow gauge railway to transport the Carpathian forest. The first stop was on the swamps, and you see we all walking on wooden trails for security. Guys, we are on the swamps now, and you see these wooden roads, they were built for tourists, not to make the trail dangerous. Yes, and the only question I'm wondering is where is the toilet? Because if I need to seek toilet there, background, it can be dangerous. By the way, guys, what did you know about Roxalana, the legal wife of the Ottoman Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent? Did you know she was born in Ukraine? Guys, currently we are in the ivano frankivsk region near village Rohatin. Maybe you know such story that in 16th century, uh, Krim Tatar made a slave ride into the uh, Carpathian Mountains village and captured very beautiful woman that was uh, enslaved in Ottoman Empire and became a wife of Sultan. It was Roxalana. She was the daughter of an Orthodox priest from Rohatin and her real name was Anastasia Lisovska. Yeah, Sultan lost his mind because of Ukrainian woman. But let's get back to Leopold Popel. When the First World War began, the Austrian Popel returned to his homeland, selling the forest enterprise to the British joint stock company Silvina. The new owners also built a lot of sawmills and narrow gauge railways and gave access to the village of Wihada for tourists and from Europe. Please advise me in the comments if the tours of narrow gauge railways are popular in your countries because such roads are extremely popular here in Ukraine. It's a good way not to walk a lot and still enjoy a piece of Carpathian beauty, local settlements and listen to Ukrainian national songs. <laughs> tell you more about excursion in detail. The road is 13 kilometers and it takes 4 hours on slow speed just to be able to look around. Road has three stops on the swamps near waterfall and near Rio, where you can rest, do photos, spend quality time without internet and even swim in summer if you are okay with low temperature of water. You can also buy coffee and the souvenirs on the stops on small markets nearby. Guys, now I'm walking down this river. It's so peaceful, beautiful and sad moment because there is a possibility, tiny possibility, but it exists that it could be my last peaceful vacation in this country because Russia is handling international policy very aggressively. They made Johnson block the aid and I understand that station is bad. Do you know, we have been to the Sea of Azov our last time in 2021, in September, and sea was extremely peaceful and warm. It was not typical for September, not September weather. And my husband told me that probably sea is trying to tell us something. And now I understand that it was forever worse. Actually, next day I didn't read the news and decided to visit Zoo. 
So guys, we have arrived in the zoo and it's a good way to relax from news and check the animals and check how they treat them. Uh, because when I have been to the zoo in Kosice, it was amazing because it was more than like a national park where animals were living freely and did not afraid of people. The zoo was named by analogy with the second largest African river, Limpopo River. Also, there is no crocodiles in the zoo. It is situated in Drogovic district in Lviv Oblast and ticket cost $4 and it's quite cheap. In 2015, more than 300 animals were already kept in the zoo. In 2016, more than half a thousand. Among the animals brought all over the world, the zoo has many rare and unique animals. I'm sorry guys to be too honest, but I guess I have a bad vibe because the cages are too small and seems for me too dirty. Actually, lately I thought I should be softer on workers. They are doing their best despite of dirt in the cages. Maybe they have a lack of staff cleaning it due to the war, because many assistant staff left the country. These beautiful creatures were given as a gift from Yonkin Zoo. I hope they are really doing fine here. At least in the zoo I saw no animals who are afraid of people. It means they were not physically insulted. This is a good sign. Actually, geese were very friendly. Monkeys were touching me and llamas licked my camera. I hope children are really enjoying staying here and interacting with animals. By the way, a lot of cats are living in a zoo. I've seen at least five of them. They were pretty chunky, so at least they're eating well. The essential question is, are animals happy living in the zoo? Animals in good zoo are certainly having a better life than animals in the wild. If the zoo has all proper conditions for animals, lack of diseases, parasites, medical help with untreated injuries and regular food and water, why not? I always wanted to have one of such creatures for myself, but Ilya doesn't want but guys, we have a war in the country, active combat operation and shelling provoked desire to save oneself. However, it's worth remembering, we are responsible for those who depends on us, the inhabitants of zoos. They have lost the ability to survive by their own and are not much different from pets. As you know, the Russian troops mercilessly drops bomb on the zoos, for example, Kharkiv Zoo. But the workers continue to take care of the animals, which has become a real challenge. In addition to the threat of life, there was shortage of food and medication. It's known that due to the lack of staff, the animals in the Kharkiv Zoo were evacuated on their own risk to other areas, for example, to Eka Park, located in Kavalivka. Another 25% of animals went to Germany, Poland and Czech Republic. And I would like to admit and celebrate Germans here. They transferred a lot of money to the zoos who suffered in the war and also sent humanitarian aid and basic medicines. So in April 2022, the Berlin Zoo's organizations collected over 300,000 euros in donations for zoos in Kyiv, Kharkiv and Odessa. Guys, the lives of little animals are in our hands. Everyone can participate in supporting them. I will leave the link of the zoo in description. If you want to become a patron, please kindly connect the zoo. Guys, thank you one more time for sticking around till the end of the video. I hope such funny and relaxing video is also worth of watching. Please like and subscribe to my channel and share this video in the social media. Thank you and see you next time!